What's up everyone, Off The Cuff Reviews here. My name is Alex and today I have a special new video. We are going to be talking about Once Upon A Time In Hollywood, so let's get into it. I am finally back with this series where I dive into movies and I compare them to books and I'm really excited because this is actually a video that I've been meaning to make since the dawn of my channel. Um, this is actually a video that sparked my interest in creating this YouTube channel altogether and I wanted to talk about Once Upon a Time in Hollywood. I've had ideas to make this YouTube channel where I talk about movies um, and all this kind of stuff a long time ago years ago but i never decided to pull the trigger and then once upon a time in hollywood came out and my friend was a uh, movie reviewer um like a film critic he worked for a paper where he wrote movie reviews and then that sparked my interest in wanting to make a youtube channel and f sharing my own views because i feel like what I have to say is pretty important sometimes and I, I feel like I have a voice and I wanted to express that and I wanted to join a community of people where I can express that and I wanted to talk about Once Upon a Time in Hollywood today and let's get into it. Once Upon a Time in Hollywood from Quentin Tarantino, almost three hours long. It's a long movie that covers a variety of different topics and it's at the core like a comedy drama and it's a character exploration into these characters that Tarantino made. This film explores a lot of different things and a, a lot of different themes and um, Tarantino set out to make this in mind where he because I don't know if you guys have ever actually listened to any interviews with Tarantino but he usually goes in depth and, and will happily talk about his love of films and and filmmaking and where his inspirations come from and who his inspirations are and in this movie and in the subsequent novelization um, there are a lot of references and a lot of things that inspired Tarantino after the movie he released a novelization, like I said. But this is not just a typical novelization. This is a novelization that goes in depth of the characters. It, it, there's actually a lot more to the story than we are aware of. In the movie, for example, there is a heavy emphasis on the Manson murders and Sharon Tate. And in the book, that's barely mentioned at all. I think the, tan the the Manson murders have its own chapter, but they don't really go in depth of that storyline, and it's not really a major plot point of the book. The book is more about the characters, about the actors that the, the story is about, and it doesn't really go in depth of the Manson murders, like I said. It's really about the characters. The, the, dog, it's, the dog in the story has its own chapter, chapter dedicated to its own backstory so we learn about the dog we learn about cliff booth's backstory and and his uh, uh, like all of these crazy aspects of his life that you don't really get to explore in the movie but overall the film was amazing it had funny moments it had sad moments it had a really touching tribute to Sharon Tate, at least in my opinion. I feel like a lot of people don't talk about that part, but there is a really nice tribute to Sharon Tate. He doesn't actually go into the murder aspect of Sharon Tate, which I thought was a really nice touch because I was actually worried that he was about to kind of depict that in a really distasteful way, but he actually was really smart with it and decided not to go that route. And I think it pays off. I think it really pays off. I really like the story of Sharon Tate going to watch um, her movies and stuff. And it was just like a really nice touching scene. The movie goes in to these characters who are Western actors and their stunt doubles. And, you know, it talks about Bruce Lee and all these different um, actors and and moments in history and then it kind of interweaves these these tales of these uh, characters that Tarantino made up into those other stories and, and into these historical aspects which I thought was a really cool um, idea I feel like 
DiCaprio was casted perfectly in this role, even though some of his roles as of late um, have been iffy i thought this one was actually really cool i felt like he stepped out of his own comfort zone and was able to kind of take on this role of a of a 1960s western actor i mean he's never really done something like that before and i i thought that was cool and and a really nice touch um to see him in a different role same with brad pitt i feel like brad pitt's role in this was a little bit different and i feel like he um embodied that role perfectly in in and even though, you know, I feel like both of these actors kind of get cast in some really crappy roles as of late. But I feel like these this once upon a time in Hollywood, these roles in this movie really set them apart. They both have a certain flair to their characters and the book has that same flair, maybe even more so. And if you liked the aspect of the actors and the movie sets and the historical aspects of the movie, you're going to really like the book because that is what the book explores. The book explores that to a T like way more than the movie does. And it doesn't really go in. Like I said, doesn't go into the other aspects of like the Manson murders and stuff. I mean, I think it's mentioned, but it doesn't really go in depth and it doesn't change the, the history about it. This book really relies on the core aspects of the story in the movie. In the movie, they depict the Manson murders and they actually change history. They rewrite history. They show that the Manson um, killers, the, they, they end up at a different house. They end up at the wrong house and then, you know, things go awry and the, it changes history. They don't really go in depth there and, and you know, do a detasteful, distasteful way of showing the killing of Sharon Tate. They really go and, and do this in like a comical aspect. I thought that was really nice. I thought that was cool. I thought that really really beefed up the story and um I, that's what i really liked about the movie but the novelization doesn't show that and i i actually really appreciate that about the book i felt like most uh, people that do a novelization of their movies they just do it word for word exactly the same situations and it, and it's just like a way of like a money grab i feel like this was cool because it's not just a money grab here he really like expands ex- exponentially on the characters and the story and the core elements and you really have a grasp of where tarantino's head was at when he wrote this um like this story around this movie and this novel Overall, the book is a really nice companion piece to the movie. If you want to learn more about the characters that are at the central part of the movie, you want to grab this book and you want to read it for sure. But if you aren't really interested in that and you don't really want to dive into that, then you can skip on the reading the book because, yeah, there are elements of the movie that are in the book. But a lot of it is diving deeper into the characters and where their heads are at. So if you guys don't want that, then skip it. The book goes with the movie in a really nice way. I feel like everyone should check it out if you guys are into that. If not, go ahead and skip it if you guys already saw the movie. Um, Check out the movie if you guys haven't watched that yet because I think it's a really nice piece. Um, It's long. It's really long. But I mean, what Tarantino movie isn't long? He, he's been cranking out um, really long run times lately. And I feel like I really like that about the movies. I feel like it really gives the... Like, this is just great filmmaking at its core. You know what I mean? Like, this is what films were and this is what films are this is like this is what i love about films and filmmaking itself like this is what really inspires me to make movies and stories and there's like a lot of human elements in tarantino's um uh like his in his stories and in his book in his movies i mean and i feel like it's really cool to um like explore those kind of worlds because i mean you know, we don't really get that nowadays. A lot of it's just like rehashes of old stories, of old books, of old movies, of old TV shows. And they're just like remaking things and they're not really giving us their soul and their minds and they're not really putting any effort into it. I feel like Tarantino is one of those filmmakers that are actually putting a lot of effort into delivering a really cool piece. Um, and 
I feel like Once Upon a Time in Hollywood was no different. This was a really great film. But if you guys are excited for more content like this, please hit that subscribe button. I'm going to have more content where I talk about movies compared to books. I'm going to have to start reading more books. I have another one about Rosemary's Baby on the way. So be on the lookout for that. And again, I've been Alex. This is Off the Cuff Reviews. I'll see you guys on the flip side. Stay safe, everyone. Thanks for watching.